yeah good evening to all of you uh, especially those from the indian subcontinent and i see a lot of uh, uh, my colleagues my friends from across the world have joined in from canada from uh, europe uh, so good afternoon good morning to all of you and uh, welcome once more to uh, yet another session of this webinar uh, analytics wednesday by sama audit systems and sophis uh, private limited it's my pleasure to welcome all of you and our distinguished speaker pallav jain today from linde plc uh, this is the 22nd in the series you know and the topic is data analytics using idea practical case studies uh, by pallav jain who is head of internal audit india and south asia linde plc uh, this session is also supported by the government of canada trade commissioner service so thanks to them uh, and we have had a great session so so far you know from the beginning being the 22nd in a row you know holding it every wednesday are really getting a lot of insight foot insights from and practical experiences from learned speakers who have actually practiced analytics uh, from around the world and you know they have been uh, nice to share this with all of us uh, from 7 pm to 8 pm every day indian standard time so uh, thanks again to all the speakers so far we hope to continue this every wednesday i'll formally introduce pallav jain to you he is accomplished head of internal audit india and south asia in linde plc uh, he's got eight, more than 18 years experience in various professional areas uh, he is part of the global internal audit function at linde plc where he has delivered end to end project management of global audit reviews across many countries by implementation and use of analytical process mining tools for improving productivity identifying inefficiencies and cost savings he has worked closely shared experiences and trained colleagues in a multicultural environment with professionals across the world and have direct on site working experience in australia uk germany south africa asia i am not talking about his expertise in socks internal control reviews internal audit statutory audit global financial and operational reviews etc using various analytical tools etc he is also the recipient of global leadership award in 2020 for exceptional contribution to add value and visible leadership for the company he has successfully led global audit projects on fixed asset supply chain management and outsourcing and identified cost savings greater than usd 10 million through better management of outsourcing service providers optimization of deliveries timely capitalization and improving asset security implemented analytical tools for mass data analytics and process mining solutions to enable greater transparency increase productivity and reducing cost partnered implementation of automated metal resource planning which would reduce turnaround time for receiving metals improve working capital and reduce blockage of capital to the extent of usd 2 million so uh, this is some of the things which he achieved uh, uh, very young uh, very enthusiastic professional so i request uh, pallav to please enlighten us talk about the topic today uh and at the end maybe we'll have 5 10 minutes of question answer sessions so over to you pallav thank you thank you very much deep uh, ji for such such a nice introduction and uh, yeah, good good evening everyone if you are in india good morning and afternoon if you are in the west and uh, yeah, good night maybe if you are in the east asia or pacific well if i look at uh, the forum my experience looks very minuscule in the in the kind of context you know just be but again thank you very much for giving this opportunity to talk on uh, on the matter which is you know very close and very fundamental to to the internal audit and in fact in this changing business environment to the business as a whole i have participated in most of the series of this webinar and consciously admit the knowledge which i expanded by hearing industry expert from vast experience in the specialist field simply un unparalleled and actually it's a very good feeling to to learn to be on a learning curve once again where i can utilize my experiences share my experiences and gather insights uh, from from the esteemed speakers here and apply them in the in my own projects well i know this uh, this topic has been covered in depth and across length and breadth so there could be a possibility of uh, of the key so pardon me for that so i'd like to share the presentation now well if i made you the host so you can share your screen sure yeah 
can you can see the presentation now uh, not yet no, not yet pallo yes now we can see it okay let me just uh... right okay so agenda for for this presentation today is uh, you know we're talking about uh, the data analytics uh, and its advantage in general its the capabilities like you know what are the stages of uh, data analytics then we will talk about uh, the data analytics approach uh, in linde how we follow the data analytics and what are the time series uh, which we have obtained through that then i would share my perspective on uh, data analytics uh, which we carried out uh, during pandemic it's a stressful situation at that time and uh, how internal audit also needs to ramp up its uh, capacity and its uh, its learning knowledge to contribute uh, to meeting these objectives along with that i would also like to share some practical case studies which will enlighten us uh, in terms of how we have achieved those objectives and those success stories which has really helped business uh, to to achieve some of the things uh, which uh, we could and then uh, i would also like to share some of the lessons learned from uh, from those sessions so this is a uh, kind of a basic slide uh, so i just want i thought i would like to give a quick uh, snapshot and an overview of uh, what uh, data analytics is and i know we have seen the slides you know from so many times but uh, i would also like to share my perspective uh, towards what data analytics is and how data analytics can contribute towards business and what are its advantages so so we talk about uh, today's uh, technological centric business environment where you know the organizations uh, digital fitnesses contributes enormously like right, towards its effectiveness competitiveness and its you know, perceived value and i think uh, the same thing applies for the internal audit function as well on a whole so all the leading function in fact not only about internal audit across businesses they are exploring different ways where data analytics can help them to do things differently so so be it from redesigning their risk assessment to become data driven or to leverage on analytics to continuously monitor control given business are now implementing a kind of continuous control monitoring system or to conduct full population testing and delivering stakeholders more insights through real time dashboard and reporting the such groups can really act in real time and actually it flags out and investigate risk issues and it also helps to anticipate risk without compromising on independence on major things moreover like digital auditing also gives internal audit department that extraordinary opportunity i would say to play an expanded strategic role in the organization they serve so overall what is actually data analytics is just an art of converting information into insight which would provide value to the organization which will and to help them in making decisions and some of the broader data analytics that want to do is i you know about trans how it transforms the data into the meaningful information like this picture of data which is being generated every seconds but how do you going to take this raw data into an information or stitch together into an information which can be aligned with the objectives and how it will facilitate in decision making that's one of the biggest advantage of data analytics secondly it helps to better focus and audit coverages like mass data analytics which we do so it helps to shift the judgmental based sample testing to a much more transparent testing of the whole population to give a better perspective a complete picture to the management thirdly it facilitates risk identification where we collect data from different sources to understand what will be the risk profile lastly it also helps to identify issue in real time and this is all about how they are going to continuous auditing continuous monitoring of controls and you know it can move from periodic evaluation of risk and controls based on sample population and can you know can go on evaluation to a larger population to extend and identify issues in the real time immediately which can also ward off many of the risks which can come from the data which can increase efficiency and effectiveness like we can we can analyze the 
entire population or we can analyze the entire set of data. But whenever we use a proper channelized data analytics, it can, it can massively increase the efficiency and can reduce considerable amount of time. Lastly, or second lastly, maybe the quality of audit is greatly improved because as an, as an auditor, we always face this challenge, always face this challenge with the management, how we arrive at the particular finding. But when we are going to apply the quantifiable data analytics, it is, it is easily and factually proven, there is very little room for any dispute. Last it's about cost effectiveness. Well, I've faced uh, a lot of uh, challenges you know, from the management in terms of the cost of implementing the data analytics. So, and I have a different perspective to that. We are actually not spending money on data analytics. We are using it to find out better alternatives for making money. So we should not consider it as a cost to the company. We should always take leverage and advantage of data analytics to identify more opportunities to get much, much more out of uh, the processes where we can help organizations to reduce cost and find out different channels where they can make more money. Now, this is about the data analytics capability, which, which talks about uh, the increase in the value level with the increase in the difficulty of the data analytics. Now, there are different stages of data analytics, and it's important to understand how information is channelized what is optimization? So the first, first part of data analytics is the descriptive analysis. Now, what is descriptive analysis? So this is actually the baseline analytics, and that, that takes place in all organizations and which just basically start their journey towards this analysis. So this type of analytics is kind of an assessment of data, which are mostly historical and is used to answer the fundamental question of what actually happened. So, so basically, it looks at the events of the past and tries to identify specific patterns within the data. Right? Like when someone refers to traditional business intelligence, they often describing as a kind of a descriptive analysis. So one of the examples is the visualization tools, which we use, which includes pie chart, bar charts, tables, and line graph. So, so all these forms part of the descriptive analysis. And this is actually the level to start our analytical journey and its foundation of all the other three tiers. To give you a given example, I think it's, it's easy to understand if you look at some of the sales data or sales you know, by chart, and like how many sales offered in the last quarter, whether it has increased or decreased. So these are the kind of analysis which is, which is qualified as a descriptive analysis. Now, moving on to the letter, the second part is the diagnostic analysis. So, so this type of analytics is a much more advanced form than the descriptive analytics, and it examines the data or content to answer the question, why did it actually happen? And it is characterized by, by techniques such as you know, drill down, data discovery, data mining, and correlation. And this is the second step which is built on the descriptive analytics by the organization. So once an organization achieves descriptive insight, they can apply diagnostic analytics with a uh, little more work. Now, going back to the same examples of sales transaction within a particular period, we can again have this uh, traditional buy chart, buy bar chart, which is a kind of descriptive analysis, and try to see a breakdown by segment. Now, once we look into the segmental breakdown, which segment has contributed most of the increase in sales. So these type of analysis actually forms part of the diagnostic analysis. Now to ramp up uh, on this uh, ladder, we have the predictive analytics. So, predict, so predictive analytics is actually trying to understand the fundamental question, what is likely to happen? So it's another kind of an advanced analytics that looks to use data information to understand what could act, what could actually be happening? So, so, so many times, you know, the step between the predictive and the diagnostic analysis can be a big one. Like predictive analytics uh, involves techniques such as regression, forecasting, predictive modeling, etc., which these are actually harder techniques uh, for the organization to accomplish and might require a large amount of uh, high quality data. 
And just these techniques also require a deep understanding of statistics and sometimes program languages. Although it is actually hard to achieve, I believe that the value this predictive analytics can bring is immense. Now, the next kind of journey on top is the prescriptive analytics. Now, this prescriptive analytics uh, is actually a method of analytics which analyzes data to answer the question what should be done? So, this type of analytics basically is you know, characterized by techniques such as simulation, neural networking, machine learning, etc. And it's actually a very, very advanced form of analytics. So, the reliability of the, this prescriptive analytics also largely depends on the accuracy of the other three types of analytics, which is shown in the table below. But when we implement this kind of analytics, the value that it brings in an organization where they were able to make decisions based on highly analyzed facts and rather than instinct. Right. So, so it will give an immense value and it reach the optimum level of uh, data analytics. So just to actually sum up, when we are in the journey of uh, implementation of data analytics, I think it is very important that uh, we, we keep in mind all these four kinds of analytics and how they actually work together. So starting with the descriptive analytics that answers the question what happened, to the diagnostic analysis that why it happened, and to a much more advanced form of analytics in terms of what is likely to happen, and towards the ultimate form of analytics, what should be done. Now, I would like to share the perspective from the LinkedIn group how data analytics in Linde has actually evolved. And the journey of data analytics is, is pretty long back. You know, I mean, at least when I joined the company back in 2007, we were already using idea and risk assessment software techniques. And from there on, we just built up on uh, the data analytics capabilities and expanded uh, the analytics to different processes and across geographies and implemented some advanced tools in terms of the synonymous and W for visual reporting. So, so when we look at uh, the entire end-to-end -end, uh, life cycle of an audit, it, which actually begins with updation of the audit window. So it is it is all about how we identify the queries. And while coming to the updation of audit uh, universe for risk assessment, we have the data such as the revenue of an organization, any organizational changes, any epic impact, any major events, prior reported finding, key risk, management input, all are considered, all these are important data, data points which are considered to generate ideas on the processes which needs to be audited. And, and there is already a predefined weightage to each of the each of the data points based on the risk assessment, which will generate a particular risk value. So and this risk value helps us to identify and generate the intervals and intervals the, the number of audits which needs to be carried out and the processes which uh, needs to be done. Well, thereafter, this data and output in terms helps us to generate a much more defined scope for, for the audit in terms of its timeline, except processes and controls, which needs to be reviewed. It also highlights the area for the data analysis. And you know the type of analytics uh, which needs to be used. So, you know, for example, if, if we are doing an account receivable, maybe we are interested in DSO uh, analysis, etc. the process, we are interested in split and PO analytics, uh, identification of the payment. So, all this will come from this planning software. So, what type of processes we need to follow? But then the next step is requesting the data, which is kind of uh, blend into the field of process collection and validation of uh, data, which, which happens you know, after determination of uh, type of analytics, uh, which is in line and ob objective uh, of the tools that are in use. Then under Fieldwork, we carry out analytics from two aspects. One, we use extensively IDEA, which has generated immense value across businesses for us. So, so around, the, around the world, maybe we have you know, more than 50 IDEA licenses and we apply that in each and every audit with standardized uh, tools and uh, scripts. And then uh, we also have uh, Salonis uh, process mining tools, 
which is used. So IGA is mostly used for descriptive, diagnostic, and sometimes predictive analytics. And they are standard sets of analytics uh, in each and every processes, which, which can evaluate deeper and impactful results uh, you know, to the business. Then, uh, this, uh, then the synopsis is used as a process mining tool to understand the deviations uh, from the set uh, rules and processes. Now, it, it gives a great insight into the process and any exceptions to the defined rules. And it also considers recording of activities and time span events to generate the outliers, which then can be directly investigated. So, so they are there are many times you know, we face this question of uh, uh, what is the difference between uh, idea and uh, salonis and you know where we need to apply idea where we need to apply salonis so i would just generalize uh, uh, this difference and try to explain from a perspective of the human body but idea is a kind of a data analytics uh, software but salonis is a process mining kind of an x-ray of a human body. So, so it actually shows whether there is any defect within the human body in terms of, you know, whether the organs are in proper place and proper size, etc. Similarly, you know, it shows uh, if there is any defect in the business process against, you know, the defined rules and activities based on the time span. Whereas, you know, idea is more about uh, kind of blood testing, which we do. We, we know the set of uh, testing which need to be carried out. And on that, we can definitely innovate to find out uh, the symptoms uh, towards that. So this is uh, basically the, the difference between the process mining tool and, uh, and the idea. And uh, at times, they also tend to overlap. But, uh, but it's, it's important that uh, we use it at a specialized place to generate proper value out of those. Now, the fourth one. The fourth one is about uh, reportings and follow-up, where we used Tableau for visual reportings, and uh, which is also kind of aligned uh, with uh, map with the risk assessment tool uh, Audimix, which is actually kind of an audit uh, management software for us, where all the data and all the views are being recorded. So, so, so this is actually we are actually moving towards much more crisper reporting and leaner reports. So visualization tools like Tableau can give a real-time information about, uh, about the audits, about the open findings, about the follow-up stages, about the priorities of, uh, of the findings, where we need to focus, how long the findings is open. So all this can be easily achieved and visualized through the use of, use of Tableau. Now, these are the general uh, internal audit uh, analytics uh, which we carry out. Uh, I'm not well uh, much much into it as, as we all know, like in the P2P process, what are the general analysis of P2P ticket payments, peer trading, etc. Similarly, OTC process has its own uh, set of uh, analytics. And similarly, the payroll inventory and others will have an old set of analytics. And this this this, this is just uh, just uh, naming a few. It is not an exhaustive list where uh, where we can fall upon. So so there there can be other additions as well, uh, based on the business objectives, based on how we how we need to carry out uh, the other analysis. Now, this is this is the site uh, you know, that I'm much more passionate about because uh, when I when I received the call um, from it actually extended me uh, this opportunity to talk about and share my experience on the data analysis. So by the time I have attended so many of the analytics sessions and seeing experts talking on this topic, I really began to think what should I add more. Then I reflected back uh, into last year, into the last one year journey of uh, internal audit. And, and I thought, you know, how, how did internal audit contribute during this unprecedented time? And most importantly, how it's going to make a difference to the business. You know, we all know, I mean, it's, uh, it's also not right for me to say, and that you know it was a great time or not, but uh, this uh, this time is uh, present as the most rigorous test of uh, business continuity and management, a massive economic disruptions. And like as an auditor, the challenge was definitely to meet the audit plan, and this was very evident, especially the remote working added to another dimension of complexity. 
getting management time during this crisis was even more difficult than ever before. And understand the so Everyone was evolving. Everyone was trying to do things differently. So as internal auditor, so as an internal auditor, we must also weigh how the pandemic is affecting their organization, how we can help, how we can stay relevant by bringing new value to the field without definitely compromising on the independence. Now, thereafter, you know, we weigh into our strength and highlighted some activities which can be of immediate support. And one of them is to combine and reach out approach along with the data analytics to come up with an innovative solution. We believe that there are a lot of ways for internal to embrace the skill unique opportunities, like uh, participating in crisis management, identifying new and changes like cybersecurity and liquidity system. We can help, we can be more agile, including finding ways for internal audits to work remotely, which was initially definitely a challenge you know, for everyone, and not only internal audits, but for business. Ramp up the data analytics. I think this, this really was a time where I believe we have utilized the data analytics uh, to our maximum potential, which has really you know, helped the business uh, to generate value and to get a lot of it. Provide answers uh, to the live to the fold. And I think it's very important that uh, we, we keep or continue having interaction with the other community to identify and uh, understand uh, if there's some additional risk which we need to, to carry on, or with the, or whether you know, there are any other challenges which we have to Work closely with the first and the second line groups, as well as the second work, which is also very important because we are completely disconnected from the plan. And still focus on the compliance aspects. Now, now here all this all this can be greatly achieved by the help of the data analytics, where you know the shift of uh, audit strategy to identify high risk priority issues this time, where a proactive support to the management in view of this change in environment is taken, and also providing management with a real time feedback on important exceptions that has become kind of a need for the day, without losing on the on the compliance aspect. But as an as an internal auditor, I would uh, you know, like to share my experience, you know, especially during the first phase of, uh, of this pandemic, where where there was a crisis on the business sustainability and liquidity, you know, which we draw our attention towards using analytics for the processes of working time. There are lots of areas where streamlined in terms of elections, detection of early payments, not requiring standings to help to save liquidity. And it has really added a significant value to the business. But the real challenge actually came during the phase two of the program. Where the company was also in focus to meet the oxygen demand. And I think it's a kudos to all the distribution, to the plant people who has worked 24 into 7 to meet uh, you know, whatever bit of work they can do from the world. So the supply chain was completely on stress. And one of the most important objective was how quickly we should supply to the customers in the hospitals without any inefficiency. And here, as an internal monitor, we, we should also need to support the businesses. So we took up the our idea and answer. And here we have used it extensively to identify the core objective, which are a part of the follow-up process to help business achieve its objective. And I would like to share three of the success stories where I did play a, where I did play some part in managing the risk and achievement. So as we know that, you know, there's a when they have huge responsibility during the pandemic, which is delivered very successful. So now in order to identify those three four areas, what was important for us to understand how the value is created. And any, any one area out of this that goes wrong can jeopardize the entire process. So value is then delivered to, so basically we identify the five rights from the data analysis. Now, to be successful with any audit analysis, you know, there are several requirements uh, that needs to be put in place. And without, uh, without these uh, requirements, there is considerable risk that the analytics will not be successful. Now, following these five rights of audit analytics, 
we identified the proper scope, the proper data, the right tool, the right analysis, and the right analysis. And in building up a case study to support the business and the sector. So the first one I will talk about is the right objectives. So, so the right objective uh, for the analysis function must be very clear in terms of the aim of the analysis. So we need to be very sure what we actually want to achieve through this uh, particular analysis. And once once we have zeroed in on the scope of the analysis, then uh, it needs to be agreed with the, with the management and and then we need to continue. Then the second step will come about the right amount of data. The data set should be checked for validation and completeness and accuracy. I think this is very important because in the changing business environment and when there, when there are different sets of data, sources of data available. It is very important that we should validate the sources and we should also check the sources for completeness and accuracy. Else the result will not be accurate. Then comes the right tool. So, so there are many different tools available to perform the data analysis. Like specialized tools like IDEA, ACL, etc. Visualization tools like W, process mining tools like Celonis. So it's very important that we select the right tool, which is actually applicable for the right objectives. Like for example, if audit is to identify potential fraud through an examination of emails by looking for any associated tools, then Tableau or Power BI might not be going to help that much, as these are not a tool for text analysis. So it's very important to use the right tool for the job. The next one is the right analysis. There are many different tools now available. After the selection of a, a particular tool, it's also important to identify what kind of analysis we can do. So the analytics which actually fulfills the defined objective to be used. Like for example, if the audit is to identify duplicate aims, then analytics does not need a detailed stratification of you know, tables by product group or, or an analysis of aging of the tables. While these items may be of interest, but uh, you know, at that time they are not going to deliver that specific outcome as defined for duplicate payments. So after we identify the right analytics, the final stage should be the right analysis. Now this, this stage is something which has been overlooked at many places, at many times. You know, we can have, we can get all the four things right, but if we do not have the right analysis, right person, right people, who can, who can visualize and see through the objectives, see through the data, see through the tools, and see through the analytics, we will never be able to achieve this. Because a good analytics, I believe, can see beauty in data. Well, so the right analytics with domain and with good business knowledge should be preferred to perform the right. Right. So, so after we carried out the, the five fights, I would like to share uh, case studies how we go about it. <coughs> okay. now, now, one of the important objectives was how we need to achieve the delivery optimization for the supply chain. Now, here the objective was delivering the right quantity and at the right time to correct forecast of customer consumption pattern. Now, now here the biggest challenge was we, we don't know when the customer will run out of stock or run out of the product. So it was very important that we define our objective in a very clear and crisp fashion so as to completely focus on, on the customer consumption related issues. And another challenge was <clears throat> how we ensure the completeness and accuracy of data because we have SAP environment where deliveries are, uh, are recorded and we have distribution software from where the deliveries are scheduled. So, so taking uh, data from both the sources and matching for completeness and accuracy was a challenge. 
but again without this uh, uh, right data we will not be able to find out the exact objective which we are using now then comes the usage of idea and tablet for analysis and report so here the extensive use of ideas has happened which uh, which I'll, I'll come back come to later and then the right person with business understanding was also from part who actually knows idea and tablet who actually has the understanding of uh, the business process who who knows how the distribution system works and uh, we also need to interact uh, with uh, with the business people to align on our analysis and the objectives now how it affected was so from the idea uh, we have downloaded uh, the historical consumption data which we have summarized the data based on uh, the customers and months then after we look for seasonality fluctuation in consumption analyze the data from tank computers for the tank levels you know which will give us an idea about uh, how many days of uh, product is left with them now now the part of the idea is uh, we use the simulation trend analysis to forecast the consumption pattern of the customers so so as to ensure that uh, we generate the, the deliveries to the customers and uh, on time now now then the last part was the allocation of uh, correct vehicles to optimize deliveries and reduce cost so once the consumption consumption pattern is identified we now understand when we need to deliver and how much we need to deliver and once that is finalized and fixed we can allocate the 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 vehicles uh, using the uh, the joint data base functions and once we allocate uh, the vehicles we saw that there has been significant improvement in optimization of delivery like you know the deliveries which previously used to go and uh, we used to deliver half fill now we are able to optimize much more higher filling so so reduction or through reduction is in the number of deliveries so higher fill rate was used and that has significantly reduced uh, the cost as well because now we are delivering the same value with the lower number of uh, lower number of deliveries the next case study is how efficient we are in the deep plan now here again the most important point was to identify the objectives like how efficient and cost effective routes are taken for delivery so we need to understand how we identify the distances from the different plants to the customers and how we how we used to used to match these distances against the delivery data which is generated from the city so a distance master here is uh, generated from the distribution and we use the summarization and joining database and extraction to identify inefficiencies in the routes and supply plans like first of all an analysis of distance master was done now with the help of the summarization function based on customer product and plant we have compared different supply points where the effective deliveries can be achieved and how how cost effectiveness can be measured then then we need to join the database from sap to compare the distance charged against the distance master whether the delivery whether there are shorter routes uh, which are available whether uh, transporters is uh, using a completely different package all together but then we need to do a geo mapping by by comparing these two data and then we have to eliminate the inefficient supply points with the greater distances and are extracted and highlighted so that all the inefficient the supply points are are being completely eliminated and uh, the supply points which is near to the customers or which are much more cost effective are actually being used now what is the result of that so this this has affected in reduction in the number of deliveries and also the cost to eliminating inefficient routes and helps in better schedule thereby saving a huge amount of cost uh, for the company Third, third case study was how we are going to optimize the vehicle's capacity utilization. So after after we have identified the customer consumption and correctly scheduling uh, the deliveries, we have understood how we are going to optimize, optimize or make efficient route planning so that uh, 
the number of babies is reduced. Now the third and the most important part was how we are going to optimize the vehicle's capacity utilization. And this is fiscally uh, important because, because if the vehicle is not fully utilized, then it will come back uh, with some return quantity and having losses. So it is important to identify and eliminate inefficient vehicles. And also it is important as an objective to understand whether a correct vehicle size is being used by the customers. We can't send a much larger vehicle to the customers which, which require very less, uh, less product. So it is very important to map uh, map these uh, two sets of data and come up uh, come up with a solution where it's going to be very very helpful helpful in terms of optimizing the deliveries. So we identify first the objectives that vehicles should be fully utilized in terms of time and capacity. Again, okay, uh, data com data completeness, ease of analytics, and the right presence is common in, uh, in all these cases. Now, in terms of uh, the actual functionality of uh, the pieces of IPR, so so we actually compare the vehicle's data against uh, the deliveries made for the capacity using the joint database. Function. So they are vehicle master data and they are replanning data which we need to map to understand which vehicle capacity is actually utilized. Now, then we use uh, the statistication function to identify vehicles which fall outside the defined criteria. So, so, so there are different criteria which are being defined like the vehicle usage of 80 percent, less than 50 percent, or even more than 100 percent, which is actually uh, mathematically not possible that we can get the results and which, which can throw much more deeper insight into the problem that master data might not be correct or there are some errors in recording or the vehicle recording might not be showing a full picture and then we need to analyze for too low to high capacity utilization and conduct a review first to find out the DMC. Then the last step should be to reallocate uh, this data to the correct size and customers to be inefficient uh, inefficient vehicles, which which would then uh, largely also save a lot of cost and and also helps in improving the delivery efficiency and quantity uh, for the for the customers. Now, now the objective that we achieve is actually to help in identification and uh, identification of specific vehicle issues also like you know if uh, the vehicles which are getting too many losses then it can be a major issue and the, the, the turnaround time is you know very high. Then again, there could be some problem with the data. So all this, all this analysis is greatly achieved by, by the help of idea. And uh, a lot of value has been created for uh, the business reduction. Now I would like to quickly share the lessons learned out of uh, this entire And one of the one of the key lessons was it's very, very important that we develop an understanding of the data you know, from a business centric view of analysis as only opposed to a technical view. We can have a lot of technical skills. We can uh, we can master the scripting, we can we can develop the uh, coding as well. But if you do not understand the business side of, uh, of the problem, then it will be very difficult to, to provide much of a value. So, so so this this uh, Analytics actually helps us to understand. Uh, it's very important to know from the business end what could be the real issue and what is the achievement we would really like to have. The second point was that we need to have a good collaboration with, uh, with the IT, with the operations, and with the senior leader to align on the objectives of the So, so working in isolation is, is not a solution because at the end of the day, if the business does not need it, then, then it will be a complete waste of time. So it is very important that we collaborate uh, with, uh, with the IT and the operations and the senior leadership to buy in or to, uh, make them sponsors for, for, the, for the projects uh, which we do. Now, since we are moving towards you know, much more faster turnaround reports, so it's very important that visually compelling and high impact reports is to be presented. And so that, you know, the other internal kinds can quickly draw insight from the data. Right? Time is money in today's world. So no one would like to waste too many times in reading those long and lengthy reports. 
Now it's about the time that we, we have moved towards a more crisper and leaner structure of the board with much more, uh, much more graphical representation of the, of the issue of treatment. Immediately give an insight to where to focus more to have a quick decision made. So when we when we look into the data, we should have budgeted more time because data was not as clean as we thought, and there are more data sources than which we initially thought to map. So 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 that is also very important to assess and understand that how many how many data sources are there, whether the those data are actually clean, how much time we need to spend in understanding the data and cleaning the data, because if the quality of data is is poor, or if the quality of data is not uh, very manageable, then it will it will greatly going to impact the output. Then the uh, right resource might not be available. So again, I mean, if we have a business understanding that we do not have the right person who can help us uh, analyze the data, that can also become a big challenge. So again, you're going back uh, to my, uh, my five hours. Which, uh, which all, which everything needs to be combined together to, to achieve uh, the quality and desired outcome. So, right resources if not available is also a big risk, where we need to ensure that uh, people with uh, nice business understanding and nice technological understanding should be available. But lastly, the big brand approach, like trying to do everything, is actually a recipe for failure. So. So initially, we, we thought of conducting a lot, lot more analysis. Like we would, uh, yeah, we would look uh, into the tank parameters, we would look into the maintenance aspects, we would look into the deliveries. But then, but then you know, what was happening was there are too many things to be done at once. And, and at the end of the day, you might not be able to achieve any one of them. So, so, so understanding the limitation is very important. And it's equally important to identify the right objectives which we need to do here. So again, doing everything, knowing everything is actually kind of a recipe for failure. And this is one of the very important lessons we we learn for even in the audits as well. Like you know, we call it as a rabbit hole. So so we should not be falling into that trap and trying to stick to the objectives, trying to stick to the idea for which uh, we so we really need to conduct the work. So these are the very important uh, lessons which uh, which we have learned uh, from from the audits you know, during the pandemic. And and lastly, I I recall a very important uh, words or important quotes of a uh, great uh, engineer architect W. Edward Denny. So without data, we are just another person with an opinion. And and it's so true because. Because if we do not have the data or we do not have the right kind of insight from the data, we are just only giving an opinion here, which 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 is actually similar to everyone. So, so thank you, thank you very much uh, for this. And I would like to understand the thoughts and uh, if there is any questions uh, out of that. Thank you very much. Uh... Pallav, I think, uh, Jairam, any questions, please? Uh, there are no questions in the Q&A section or on YouTube. Okay. Uh, Pallav, this has been a very interesting session. You know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it because, you know, so practical, coming straight from your heart. Uh, sounds simple. Sounds easy in this presentation, but I know how difficult it is and how many years it takes. Yeah. Uh, so I think if there are no questions, Pallav, if you can give your email ID, maybe you can just type in the email ID on your screen, maybe. If anybody has any questions, they can write to you or uh, if people want, they can also write to us and we'll send it to Pallav. But Pallav is putting up his email ID, so he can type it out. You can write to him. And uh, all, by the time that is happening, I'll also request Jairam to kindly, uh, if there are no questions, then kindly offer a vote of thanks to Pallav uh, on behalf of Sama. And really thankful, uh, Pallav, for you to join us. So uh, over to you, Jairam. Thank you so much. Uh, Palav, thank you for a very insightful presentation. Uh, I uh, think there were some very valuable takeaways from your presentation where you talked about uh, not adopting the Big Bang approach, slow and steady, 
take on the low hanging fruit uh, record those wins record the learnings and then move to you know higher areas of analytics and you brought out of a wonderful reflection in your session where you spoke about leveraging analytics to help business meet its uh, goals you know so that's where then business will not look at the cost of analytics as uh, that's when audit will not be singled out and said that you know you're spending so much of money on an analytic project but it's actually a, a cost well uh, considered when it is attributed to business so what wonderful uh, reflections and uh, thank you so much for uh, giving us your time uh, palav this evening uh, we really learned a lot from you and uh, as tv sir mentioned a wonderful case studies on logistics cost rationalization and i'm sure all the participation participants have appreciated and learned a lot from your session so we thank you for being with us uh, and sharing your experiences with us thank you thank you very much uh, thank you very much jaya i think it was really a pleasure for me to to be participating uh, in this uh, kind of seminars and it also really helped me to to learn from great speakers as well thank so, you palav thanks again thank you and thank you to all the participants for uh, supporting us on yet another episode of analytics wednesday and we look forward all of us at sama look forward to engaging with you all again on the next wednesday that 6th of october for yet another insightful session uh, so we sign off now and wish all of you a wonderful evening uh, and uh, day ahead uh, thank you thank you palav thank you